Getting away from the city and dropping off the face of the earth in some remote cabin for a bit is certainly a nice prospect. We all need to unplug from the noise of our everyday lives every now and then. But there are stories of people who maybe got a bit more than they bargained for. Join me as we take a look at 15 of the most amazing castaway survival stories. Number 15. Jose Salvador Alvarenga one of the most recent and most famous stories of a real-life castaway is of Jose Salvador Alvarenga. The year was 2012, and it all started on a beautiful November day in the waters of the Pacific Ocean, just off the coast of Mexico. Jose and his companion Ezekiel went off to go fishing. That's all, but a bad storm had some other plans for them, giving them rough conditions that eventually killed the boat's engine. Luckily, the men managed to avoid the deep vastness of the ocean, but were left stranded at sea and floated aimlessly for about the next 13 months. The two had quickly run out of food, but luckily for them, they were fishermen and able to catch a meal or two every day. But lack of water proved to be the biggest challenge, and they were forced to collect and ration rainwater while on the lookout for any signs of rescue. But no one was really looking for them, which is why they were left out at sea for over a year. And to make matters worse, Ezekiel died after just one month, leaving Jose all on his own and a victim of his own mind. But when he was eventually found, Jose was unrecognizable, having not had a shave and a haircut for 13 months and dramatically thinner. His story made headlines, and he was, of course, given a hero's welcome. Number 14. JFK who knew that one of the most famous American presidents and pop culture icons was also once a castaway? Before he entered the Oval Office, John Fitzgerald Kennedy was the Marine commanding officer of the patrol torpedo boat PT-109. During a routine nightly patrol of the Solomon Islands in 1943, the PT-109 was attacked by a Japanese destroyer ship. The strike was so bad that JFK's boat was broken in two. Twelve men lost their lives, while the survivors were able to cling for dear life to the ship's wooden bow. But the fight wasn't over there, because they floated in the water for the next five hours, cold, hungry, and scared, and with many of them wounded. Taking matters into their own hands, the crew kicked their way to the nearby Plum Pudding Island, where they spent two days without food, water, or shelter. Kennedy, still the commanding officer, saw a larger island in the distance and swam his way there hoping that the larger Olasana Island would provide more resources. And while he was mostly wrong, the crew survived on coconuts for six days before the rescue team came. While the story seems like it has the makings for a movie, these survival tales were quite common during the days of World War II, no matter which side you were fighting for. But today, Plum Pudding Island is now Kennedy Island and is visited by plenty of tourists every year who are intrigued by the tale. Number 13. Alexander Selkirk We may resent our high school English teachers for forcing us to read books, but if they ever grilled you on Robinson Crusoe, know that it's based on a true story. Alexander Selkirk was a Scottish sailor who in the year 1704 found himself in quite the predicament. On their way home from a long time at sea, Selkirk's captain wanted to make a stop along the way to pick up some fresh supplies. But not only was Selkirk eager to go home and cranky from being away for so long, but he also protested the captain's choice out of fear that the extra supplies would add unnecessary and dangerous weight to the ship. And he told his captain that he'd rather be shipwrecked on an island than spend another day on the ship. Well, the captain took him up on his offer and left Selkirk on an island in the South Pacific Ocean. Selkirk bit off a little more than he could chew, though, because it would be five years before another ship came. He was on his own, relying on the sea for his meals and building a shelter towards the center of the island, and by some miracle, Selkirk even found some goats that provided milk, meat, and even fur for some crude clothing. But who found him all those years later? Pirates. Some scurvy dogs docked on the island and, much to their surprise, found the Scottish wild man and took him back to civilization. Number 12. Narcisse Pelletier It may be hard for some of today's younger folks to wrap their heads around, but there was a time that not long ago when we put kids to work. Hard work. At the humble age of 14 years old, Narcisse Pelletier was a cabin boy on board a ship setting sail through Cape York Peninsula near Papua New Guinea. It's said that the captain made some pretty bad decisions, which caused them to strike the reef and quickly sink. Many of the survivors were able to hop in the lifeboat and set sail for the nearby Rosser Island. 
but much to their chagrin, the island was already home to an indigenous population who, needless to say, was not happy to see these new visitors. Narcisse and his shipmates were forced to move on in the ocean for the next two weeks with very limited supplies before they came across another island. Not wanting to take care of a young boy, the crew abandoned Narcisse here and pressed forward without him in an act of pure cruelty. But in a strange twist of fate, two local women found the young Narcisse and took him under their wing, provided him with food and shelter, and treated him as one of their own. Narcisse stayed here for 17 years until another ship docked here in search of fresh water. Allegedly, Narcisse wanted to stay after having finally known kindness, but the sailors and their guns insisted that he come along. Number 11. Philip Ashton like so many survival stories, Philip Ashton's begins with a fit of bad luck mixed with tragedy. In 1722, the man was captured at sea by pirates who would have sold him into slavery had he not escaped and hid on the Roatan Island in Honduras. Needless to say, he was lucky because a life of forced servitude is not a life anyone should live. But being the lone castaway on an island is tough too. But surprisingly, Ashton wasn't alone. He actually found another castaway living on the island for some time, and the two found a great deal of camaraderie in each other. One day, though, the fellow castaway went into the jungle in search of food and water and fell victim to the island, never to return. But not all was lost, because the fellow castaway left behind all of his supplies, which included knives, gunpowder, and even tobacco for a relaxing smoke at the end of a hard day of surviving in the wilderness. Being a castaway is incredibly difficult, but Ashton had it pretty easy. Eventually, a New England ship docked at Roatan Island to find him eating, smoking, and soaking up the Honduran sun. Ironically, Roatan Island is an incredibly popular tourist destination, with Ashton and his ill-fated companion serving as the first guests. Number 10. Geronimus Cornelis while we've seen some successful castaway survival stories so far, not all of them have had a happy ending. While the victim may come home in the end, there's a great deal of trauma that they can take with them. Such is the case with Geronimus Cornelius. Geronimus was sailing on board a merchant ship in 1611, along with 300 others when it was wrecked off the coast of Western Australia. About half of the passengers survived the initial wreck and made their way to Beacon Island. But with that many people and no one in charge, chaos reigned supreme. But even before the wreck, about 30 sailors, including Geronimus, were planning a mutiny against the commander, and the incident only made things worse. With the commander now nowhere to be found, Geronimus quickly put himself in charge of the survivors and ruled over them with an iron fist. And he used fear as a means of control. Anyone who stood up to him was quickly dealt with, and he enslaved many of the survivors. As time went on and supplies dwindled, things only got worse, and with so many mouths to feed, Geronimus had no problem thinning out the herd and dispatching anyone he didn't like. The island quickly became a mass grave of more than 100 people. Eventually, the commander returned to the island with help only to find a horror show and very few survivors. In the end, the Dutch East India Company arrested Geronimus and his co-conspirators, and they were hanged on the mainland. Number 9. Juana Maria The island of Blue Dolphin is yet another classic novel inspired by a true story of survival. It all began in the 1850s when Juana Maria, an indigenous woman of the San Nicolas Island, fell victim to the Russian hunters who wanted to plunder this so-called New World. An evacuation of the island began that would take the islanders to the Californian mainland, but Juana Maria was left behind while looking for a lost child amidst all of the confusion. In the end, Juana Maria was the sole citizen of the island for the next 20 years. Her cohorts had all taken supplies with them, and she was left to build her own shelter and hunt for food. But Juana Maria was incredibly resourceful, using whale bones to build her shelter. She hunted birds and used the fur from sea otters to make her clothes. And while having these kinds of survival skills are paramount, being alone for 20 years is incredibly tough, and not interacting with a single soul in that time is enough to drive anyone insane. But the boat captain, George Nadiever, eventually found both the island and her and brought her back with him to the mainland. He invited her into his home to help acclimate her to this new society and all of its new technological advancements, but it was all too much for Juana Maria. Sadly, she died of dysentery just seven weeks after her rescue. Number 8. Fernão Lopez 
The next entry on our list takes us all the way back to the year 1516, meaning this is one of the earliest known cases of a castaway on record. The story of Fernão Lopez sounds like it's been plucked from an adventure story, but because it's so old, perhaps it serves as a foundation of many of the stories we read as a youth. Fernão Lopez was a Portuguese sailor living during a time of great turmoil who sided against his home country during the Goa Revolt. He took to the Indian Muslims and their cause, and was severely tortured because of his newfound allegiance, and put on a ship headed for Lisbon for further punishment. But when the ship stopped along the way in St. Helena, Lopez made his escape and found himself the lone survivor of a deserted island. Anytime a ship would dock here, he hid in the brush to avoid any further questions or capture. But during his solitude, Lopez became a folk hero and sailors would often leave supplies for him to find on the island as a tribute to his defiance and fortitude. But word traveled fast even back then, and the king heard the modern folktale. Instead of sending search party to capture him and pick him up where his torturers had left off, the king, impressed by Lopez, pardoned him and invited him back to the mainland. While Lopez accepted the terms, he went back to the island, preferring the quiet and simple life his solitude offered him. Number 7. Gerald Kingsland and Lucy Irvine Even though we associate castaways with stories of old, there are plenty of modern examples to pique our interest. This one involves the pairing of Gerald Kingsland and Lucy Irvine. Gerald had wanted to live on an island for a long time, but he knew that he'd desire some companionship. So when he put an ad in the paper, Lucy Irvine accepted. The two strangers embarked on a strange journey in 1982. Stranded by choice, 100 miles from Papua New Guinea on Tuin Island, Gerald and Lucy's story began well enough as they learned to live with limited resources for about a year. But the biggest obstacle the two ran into was a diminished source of fresh drinking water. You see, we can go for weeks without food, but just three days without water, and that's pretty much it. So needless to say, the couple was in trouble. But they got lucky when they were found and rescued by some Badu Islanders who took them back to the mainland. The two chronicled their story, with Lucy's becoming a book entitled Castaway, which would later inspire a film of the same name. Number 6. Fanadik Island Sometimes the truth can be stranger than fiction, and that's exactly the case with this next entry. Six Brazilian sailors had set out to sea and ended up finding themselves stranded on a remote island. And despite the pleasures and privileges of modern technology, they attempted to alert the mainland using the only crude technology they had available to them, a message in a bottle. It was a shot in the dark, but after their engine caught fire, it was the only way to get the word out there. What began as a 10-day expedition quickly turned into a fight for survival after their engine had caught fire and they became stranded on a small deserted island. They were there for nearly two weeks with no food and a dwindling supply of fresh water. The sailors included their position, how long they were gone, and even included the names and phone numbers of their loved ones in the note, which was eventually found by the Brazilian Navy. And luckily, when the rescuers showed up, everyone was still alive, albeit drained of energy and dehydrated. They were quickly choppered back to the mainland with their story and given a happy ending. Number 5. Ada Blackjack Ada Blackjack was an Inuit woman who in 1921 was one of five settlers who left for the ill-fated expedition towards Russia that would have left her another castaway. Weather conditions were horrendous from the get-go, and by the time they finally made it to Wrangell Island, rations were gone. Ada's five-person team attempted to hunt for food, but came up with nothing. Needless to say, things were not looking good for the group, and starvation and desperation quickly set in. Three of the five left the camp in an attempt to search for food along the frozen 90-mile Chuchki Sea towards harsh Siberia, and as you would expect, they were never seen again. Ada's final companion died soon after, and the woman who was originally hired on the expedition as a cook and seamstress all but gave up before finally being rescued after years in the cold. Naturally, her story of survival made headlines all over the country, and she was even dubbed the female Robinson Crusoe. She hated the attention and, in a strange turn of events, moved back to her original home in the Arctic to live out her days until she was 85. Number 4. Driftwood Dave We've seen so many stories today about accidental castaways, but what about these people who are castaways by choice? You should talk to David Burgess then. 
Burgess, more commonly known as Driftwood Dave, chose to live the quiet life in England's Exmoor National Park. The only catch here is that living in a national park is illegal, so Driftwood Dave was considered a squatter. He even tried to apply for ownership rights to the land, but his attempt was futile. Driftwood Dave lived in his little homemade beachfront shack in the park for three decades made of driftwood, timber, and anything else that may have washed up ashore during his three-decade residency. His place wasn't all that bad. His house came complete with a front door and window frames and even had a small staircase. And don't forget about his mattress that he made of dry leaves. He was incredibly resourceful, despite the Park Service attempts to get him out. Eventually, though, Driftwood Dave was able to strike a deal with the park's owners in 2011, and they finally left him alone. Driftwood Dave, he never bothered anybody and is certainly an interesting case for a castaway. Number 3. The Shark Fisherman In 2005, five fishermen left from the port of San Blas in Mexico for their shark fishing trip. It wasn't their first rodeo, so what they thought would be just a routine expedition turned into something much worse than anyone could have hoped for. Their boat was hit with some pretty intense winds, which pushed them against their best efforts out into the Pacific Ocean. Aside from the occasional passing ship, all of which failed to spot them, the five shark fishermen were now stuck at sea for the next ten months. They survived by collecting rainwater, which was sparse, and eating fish and seabirds they caught. But because they lacked access to any means of cooking, everything was eaten raw, which would often cause them to get sick and cause two of them to die during that time. After those ten months, a Taiwanese trawler spotted the drifting boat and rescued the remaining three men and brought them to the Marshall Islands for some much-needed medical attention. Everyone on board was presumed dead, but in a fortunate turn of events, one of the survivors returned home, only to find his daughter had been born while he was lost at sea. Number 2. Tom Neal Another castaway by choice is Tom Neal, the New Zealander who lived on the coral atoll of Suwaro in the Cook Islands between 1952 and 1977. Neal was one of those people who was tired of modern life, and probably his neighbors too. And it wasn't until he was 51 years old that his big castaway dreams came true. He gathered what supplies he thought he would need, like food, tools, even tobacco, and his cats, and made his way for the island he'd heard about during this time in the Navy as a youth. Luckily for Neil, though, the military had left behind the buildings from World War II, so shelter wasn't too hard to come by. He'd quickly have to learn to fend for himself, though, taking to fishing, catching crabs, foraging for fruits and vegetables, and even catching chickens. The man loved his solitude, and the word of his story quickly spread as Neil became somewhat of a folk hero in his own time. Sadly, though, he was forced to leave his isolated island abode due to cancer, which he succumbed to eight months later. Tom Neal's story lives on now in his memoir, An Island of One's Own. Number 1. The Robertsons The Robertsons were an English family living in Cornwall in 1971 who decided to take their schooner out and fulfill their dreams of sailing around the world. Everything was going pretty well for them for the first 18 months, but when they were about 200 miles from the beautiful Galapagos Islands, everything turned south fast. The Robertson's boat was hit by a pod of orcas and was destroyed almost immediately. The English family quickly made it to their inflatable life raft and dinghy, and after 17 days at sea, the raft died. Everyone was crammed into the tiny dinghy with just enough water for 10 days and a small bag of food, mostly onions, oranges, and a tin of biscuits. Things were obviously dire for the group, and when their rations ran out, they resorted to catching turtles, carving them up to dry out the meat, and drank blood when their water ran out. Thirty-eight days into the Robertson's trip, they were picked up by a Japanese fishing trawler, the Tokamaru 2, which spotted their distress flare. In the end, the Robertson family admitted that they had little to no preparation for the trip and hadn't even attempted a local practice sail before embarking on their journey. And while that may have been the case, no amount of preparation can ever prepare you for being overrun by orcas. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.